Thanks for joining us in the Florida Today newsroom. I'm Matt Reed. Well, here's something I didn't expect. Conservatives turning on other conservatives after the George Zimmerman verdict. But if you listen to my guest's weekday morning radio show, some are blasting Governor Rick Scott for reassigning the case from the Brevard Seminole State Attorney to Jacksonville Prosecutor Angela Corey. Today, I asked for an explanation from Bill Mick, host of Bill Mick Live on WMMB Radio in Melbourne. I also debated with Bill whether the Space Coast Office of Tourism should change its marketing strategy to promote Cocoa Beach more heavily than space to out-of-town visitors. Also coming up in the program, public interest curator Alice Garwood shares the best of your letters to the editor. First, check out our talk about the news with Bill Mick. Bill, the Space Coast uh, Tourist Development uh, Group is looking at a potential change in marketing strategy here for Brevard. They're looking at potentially advertising Cocoa Beach instead of our Space Coast uh, as a way to reach out and get tourists. You think it's a good idea? I'm not sold on it. I, I like Cocoa Beach. I would like Cocoa Beach to be more tourist friendly if we're going to start touting them as the place to be. And if we're going to do that, let's think about changing the county name. They did it in Virginia Beach. That county got swallowed by the city of Virginia Beach. It is now all Virginia Beach. If you're going to do that, make Brevard County Cocoa Beach. That makes sense. Until then, no. It's a small city. It's tourist unfriendly. It's got the red light cameras. It likes its parking tickets. It's not a place that is necessarily visitor friendly. Let's not throw away the history that is the Space Coast and discard that. Now, they say you can still market space. The space is in a lull. It's not done. We're going to see manned launches again, probably, what, three to five years, at least we're hopeful. Space isn't over with. The Space Coast has meaning and history behind it. I'd like to see it stay. See, now, I don't think that we're going to lose our identity as the Space Coast. If they reach out to tourists in New York or Illinois or someplace and advertise our beach, now, whether it should be Cocoa Beach or whether it should be some kind of Brevard Beach Brevard with Here's Port what they Canaveral need to do. and all of that, Because they try to tie it into Orlando, right? Right. They're saying Orlando's closest beach. Change the name of Cape Canaveral, the city, not the body of water, Change the name of Cape Canaveral to Orlando Beach. Now you've got it. Maybe and the whole county to Orlando Beach. Why not? Do something. It's like, <laughs> it's like the kids they recruit to West Virginia University that say, is that near the ocean? Sure. That's and then right. once they get there, no. That's right. So. Well, I want to take a look at, uh, we sent Luanna Manderville out on the street to talk to people about what they make of that. Let's take a look. Okay. When planning her Florida vacation, Chatty easily said a beach close to Kennedy Space Center is important. So, researching on the internet. A lot of advertisements on the internet said, Cocoa Beach, Cocoa Beach, so we found Cocoa Beach. For more than two decades, Bavard County is marketed as Florida's Space Coast. But after looking at spring tourism numbers, the Space Coast Office of Tourism could change the branding focus to Cocoa Beach. Hotel room occupancy figures were down in the first four months of 2013. Figures were up 3.4% in May but remain down for the year. Bavard County tourism officials say Cocoa Beach is more recognizable than Space Coast. Easley and other vacationers basking in the Florida sun on Thursday afternoon agree. You don't think of the beach when you go to Space Coast. It's just the spaceship is what I thought of, you know, that. Well, there aren't any space shuttles anymore, so why not? That's what I think. Some people visiting from out of town disagree. Well, I started coming over here because of the shuttle launches. That's why my family started to come over. And then the surfing thing I just kind of got from being here. So I don't know. I kind of like the shuttle launches and everything. So I think you should keep it. Do you think people will still understand things if we say Space Coast? Um, I think just for like historical sake, they'll know that the shuttle launched from here and everything. So I think there'll be a connection, at least for a while. Vashti Vashur is an artist and a Bavard native. Her take. Uh, on a personal level, I don't think it will affect me. Um, our gallery um, is listed under Coco Village. So, um, and as part of the um, cruise lines and that sort of thing, they bust them here. So I don't think, um, I think that the cruise ships are gonna bring them here regardless of what, whether it's called the Space Coast or whether it's called Coco Beach. David Glover grew up with the Apollo program and wants his children to live near the Space Center. I think they should keep it Space Coast. Cocoa Beach is okay, but Cocoa Beach is, you, you can go to any beach, Miami Beach, Daytona Beach, 
the Space Coast is unique to this area, and it, and it has a lot of history here. So. Whatever the marketing change may be, Wendy Carlson just wants to make sure businesses continue to thrive. Would it benefit you somehow to have a change in the branding of the Space Coast or the branding of Brevard County? Yes, absolutely, as otherwise we'll die. Oh, we need this, otherwise there's not going to be a place left for people to come visit, you know? Because space, the Space Coast was huge, it was big, it drew everyone. It's awesome, it's like paradise, you know, out your back door, so why wouldn't you want to come here? Okay, let's talk about space a little bit here on a, sure. on a more serious level. One of the things that concerns me is that Congress, or at least the House of Representatives, has proposed like a 6% budget cut to NASA. That's going to maybe push back that date for human spaceflight. I thought the sequester wasn't a big deal. What's going on? Congress, since the George Bush Space Initiative, has never stepped up and funded NASA or the space program properly. I think there are some management problems inside NASA that caused that. I don't want them studying global warming. Forget the nonsense. You're about going to space. Be serious about it. Have a plan. Have a vision. Have a vehicle ready when you stop using the shuttle so we're not paying Russia all this money to send humans into space. It's ridiculous that the program did what it did. I don't blame Congress with the, with the cut, but if they want to get serious about space, they're going to have to get serious about funding it and doing it properly. Well, I know that they just tested the Orion capsule, which is going to go someplace, someday. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, earliest scheduled flight is 2017, but we just don't know. The, the, the climate change studies, I don't like that idea, but if you look across all the federal agencies that are studying climate change, Why does one of them have to be NASA? America still yeah. will be doing plenty of work on exactly. that front without NASA having to do it, but I do worry. Plenty of other scientists to lie about the climate change. I, I, I worry that the House of Representatives is kind of letting the sequester happen because they think that it's going to just keep the budget, you know, and enforce some austerity, but it is going to take its toll on some of these discretionary spending departments like NASA. You think we ought to just let it go or you think that they should try to work out some sort of deal here? I think they need to take a serious look at the management structure and people sitting around at NASA doing nothing but they have a job so they're sitting there being paid. I've heard too many of them talk about it for it not to be the truth. Let's have a vision, let's have a plan, and let's fund an actual mission that's going somewhere. Let's have a vision and a plan and right now we're not seeing one. Do you think Congressman Bill Posey's been a good representative for Brevard County on a space issue? I believe he has. Bill's a space advocate. I, I didn't like some of his comments early on about the privatized side of this, the, the private corporations, the, the uh, Elon Musks of the world. He didn't like it. Well, we put those rockets up when I was working at the Space Center in 1923 or whatever it was when right. Bill was there. It's different technology. It is a different accomplishment, and it's with private dollars in partnership with, with the federal. So I want to see those companies succeed. They're doing a good job right now. Let's talk about Rick Scott on your radio program. <laughs> it sounds like you're turning on the governor who is uh, kind of rose to power a little bit on the, you know, the, the Tea Party and, and conservative. I was a Rick Scott fan. I was glad that we had a non-establishment businessman Republican running against the Republican machine. We'd seen so many problems out of the Republican machine over the previous four or five years. The uh, the the former chairman of the party, Jim Greer, and his heavy-handed top-down, this is the candidate you're going to run, this is the candidate you're going to support. And finally, the Republican electorate decided, no, we're going to pick this one. And we picked Rick Scott, and I was all for it. I'm sadly disappointed in Rick Scott's ability to learn the job now that he's been there. He's done some very heavy-handed and stupid things himself. Let's start with uh, thinking that it was his job to evaluate all of the constitutional officers in the state, starting with the supervisor of elections. Our supervisor of elections, one of the best in the state, gets rated in the bottom four. Why? Because Lori Scott didn't puke back the information to Tallahassee that they already had. They just wanted her to correlate. So well, home rule and local control absolutely. are people that matters to us, and that's a conservative thing. Absolutely. Not his business to rate my elected officials. I do that at the ballot box every four years. Okay. Let's go more recently to the Trayvon Martin situation. Initially, when that happened and, and the shooting occurred, you had Senator Chris Smith out of uh, Fort Lauderdale area who wanted a blue ribbon panel on Stand Your Ground. Stand Your Ground was not evoked in this case, but Stand Your Ground became an issue very quickly. The governor rightly said at the time, 
I'm not going to let the political pressures of this case push me into having a blue ribbon panel on this law that we've had in effect since 2005. All of a sudden, Chris Smith puts his own panel together, and somebody gets in the governor's ear, not advising him very well, saying, you know what? He's going to show you up here if he does his panel and you don't you do yours. So what's Rick, Sco Rick Scott do before all said and done? Creates his own panel. Backs up on what he said he was going to do. Backs up on his principles because of political pressure. Sorry, that's not why the Tea Party gets behind you, Governor. Bad move. Then you've got the whole pressure to prosecute somebody in the George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin situation. You've got the uh, Sanford Police Department doing a quality investigation. They take time. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got the Brevard Seminole State's Attorney's Office, still under Norm Wolfinger at the time, taking it its time, getting ready to present it to a grand jury. Then comes Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton to town. Rick Scott caves to pressure again. The next thing you know, you've got one of his political buddies who had helped in his transition to the governorship that's running for election in a predominantly black area in Jacksonville as a prosecutor. He appoints Angela Corey to prosecute a case that's not fully investigated yet. He's not smart enough to stay out of police work and let the cops do the job. I'm very disappointed in Rick Scott. He needs to go and Alan West ought to run against him. Alan West is stirring things with the Rubio race. Needs to stop that. That's just a bloodbath for them both. If he'd run against Rick Scott, he would win and would be more formidable against a Democratic challenger than Rick Scott's going to be in November of 2014. I recently had Chris Muro, political scientist from mm -hmm. Eastern Florida State, on the program, and I asked him whether the uh, Trayvon Martin George Zimmerman case might have an impact on local elections. He didn't think so because he felt like the people who had sided with the, Zim uh, the Martin family were people who are likely to vote Democratic anyway. People who sided with Zimmerman are people who are likely to vote Republican anyway. But it sounds to me like it may be playing out in a fashion with Governor Rick Scott because the people who brung him, he's not necessarily dancing with. That's exactly right. Um, hey, I think the jury got the verdict right. I think the, uh, the jury in that Zimmerman trial considered the evidence, considered the law, and came back with the only verdict they could have if they were a thinking jury, which apparently they were. There's still division on that, and he may be right. Republicans may back the Second Amendment, George Zimmerman side of this thing. Democrats may back the take your guns, we've got kids dying in the streets, Democrat side of things. But when you have a governor who has shown his propensity to cave to political pressure, it's time to get rid of him. That's not what we want from the conservative side of the aisle. I'm not a big national conversation guy. I like to dig into the records and find stuff to fix, and I've been mm -hmm. trying to point to those sorts of things, but I, I always get the impression that really in the media world and the political world people are just kind of arguing over symbols and emotions what kind of stupid stuff are you seeing out there right now in the wake of this case oh my god well most recently uh, George Zimmerman four days after his uh, acquittal is driving on an Orlando highway there's a vehicle that has overturned rolled over an SUV family of four in it George Zimmerman and his companion get out to assist this family at this car wreck what any thinking person is going to do if they're first up on a scene like that the family that was in the rollover vehicle would like to publicly say thank you to George Zimmerman. They're afraid to do it because of the negative bash, backlash coming from the race baiters of the world who say this is all a racial issue, the Jesse Jacksons, the Al Sharptons, and the very negative tweets and Facebook posts and all of that that's coming from that severe side of this thing. Uh, they're afraid to come out. They had a press conference scheduled last week canceled it because they don't want the negative backlash from people who think they're praising Zimmerman. Then in Palm Bay, at a restaurant in Palm Bay, I have somebody uh, text me a picture last week of a restaurant receipt and it was a credit card receipt and where the tip would go it said hashtag no justice, hashtag no tip. How stupid is that? Chances are they never had a conversation with the server about the case or anything else. It was some small-minded person with an excuse not to leave a tip, impacting negatively somebody who's busting their butt to earn a tip to feed their own kids. It, it's ridiculous. Advice, leave your p personal opinions about how this case should have or would have turned out out of, out of you know, your tips, out yeah. of how Off you the treat restaurant other receipt. people. Yeah. Yeah, probably not a, the best thing to bring up and uh, deal with with strangers in terms of your business relations, that kind of a thing. Absolutely. Uh, is there anything about the, the stand your ground law in all seriousness that you think might be worth taking a second look at to change? I've always said it doesn't hurt to take another look. Uh, I like the law in that it doesn't require you to flee in the face of danger if right, you have the too. capability of defending yourself. Now, fleeing is always wise if you can do it and do it safely. If you're in a position where you can't, 
George Zimmerman on his back, head being pounded into the concrete. Where can you flee at that point? You, there's nowhere to go. You're left with whatever defensive measures you have. Uh, where I don't like stand your ground, or at least the use and implementation, I think it's caused some confusion for our, our police officers and prosecutors as they investigate crime. A guy says, he threatened me, I felt scared, I defended myself the best way I could. There's some handcuffs on them at that point. I think it's wise to take a look at that. Handcuffs on law enforcement as to what they can and can't do. Um, the other thing is where criminals acting against criminals invoke this and it's a valid defense right. and it shouldn't be. So I think there are tweaks that could be made, but let's be smart about it. And let's not be politically pressured into it by some Democrat senator who wants to reap praise in the black community at a time where a black kid has been slain in the streets by a white Hispanic, whatever that is. Yeah. I, I think that I, I saw a case where a couple of FPL workers in their FPL uniforms with blue pith helmets on showed up to work at a guy's house. He opened, fired, and shot and killed one of them and claimed oh to stay on your ground. I think we need some clarification. In, in clarification some wouldn't hurt. You're right. Although I de definitely, uh, like you, I believe in the right to self-defense with a with a firearm if necessary. Absolutely. Or your hands. I prefer to kill with my bare hands. But well, you are a lethal weapon. I'm I not. haven't had to get to that <laughs> point yet. We'll have more of my talk with Bill Mick in just a moment. Now. Here's Alice Garwood with a look at what Florida Today readers are saying. A number of readers have shared their views about school issues, including the school grades released by the state last week. Gary Schifrin of Yera writes, Once again, Florida continues to defy all the logic that exists, with school districts throughout the state being highly challenged to meet budget demands and having to cut so much, our leaders in the state capitol continue to tinker with our testing demands and consequently the state grades. My message to Tallahassee is leave high-performing schools alone and concentrate your efforts on those schools that need it. Gary Branch of Melbourne Beach says a sales tax is the fairest way to provide more funds for Brevard Public Schools. Fair is fair, and the property owners should not be the only ones paying for schools, as most of the older property owners in the county do not have children in school. I do not object to paying taxes to support education. However, I feel strongly that a sales tax is the fairest way because all county residents and visitors would support schools. Some readers have expressed concern about Port Canaveral's plans to build a new cruise terminal. Deep sea fishing boat captain Henry Hotch writes, The cruise business is big money for the port. However, the thousands in the boating and fishing community who call the port home and use Freddie Patrick Park to access the port, river, and ocean are regulars, not cruise passengers making a once-in-a-lifetime visit. Clear assurances are needed that the port will have a new facility in operation before the current one is shut down. It sounds like they are moving forward fast with the terminal and parking garage, so there is no reason this should not include caring for the local community first. Eric Griggs of Indy Atlantic writes, Building this terminal will eliminate a small park as well as several hundred parking places and six boat ramps that are used by hundreds of recreational and commercial boaters every week. While port commissioners say they will hold workshops in the future to address the boat ramp issue, there is no assurance anything will be done. I'm Alice Garwood, Public Interest Curator for Florida Today. Remember, you can send us your comments on this issue or others in Florida Today. Email your letters to letters at floridatoday.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Now, more on local politics with my guest, Bill Mick of WMMB Radio. Marco Rubio, uh, we talked a minute ago about uh, Rick Scott. He's in a little bit of hot water with uh, the Tea Party side of the Republican uh, uh, movement. Marco Rubio sounds like he's in Dutch, too. What's up? Problem is the immigration bill that Rubio and that gang of eight have put together. And while I want to sincerely believe Marco Rubio wants to do the right thing, I also sincerely believe, based on recent reports, that he's not completely understanding the bill that they've crafted. And the idea of any kind of amnesty without border security is not going to play well with Republicans. I think that's what has spurred Alan West into thinking he could successfully challenge Marco Rubio. He may be able to do that. It'll be bloodbath for both and make them a weak candidate for whoever the Democrat is that gets in the race the next time Rubio would run for re-election or whoever would win that primary. That's why I want to see Alan West get out of that, challenge the governor who was much more vulnerable, and we need some leadership that I think Alan West could provide in Tallahassee because we're not getting it from Rick Scott. Governor Voldemort ain't making it happen. Now, Governor Scott definitely uh, has been 
some would say a, a business conservative on taxes. He's been a business conservative on other issues, regulation, that sort of thing. Does that not matter as much, or is it the symbol of the day, or the the the, the issue of the day, and, and where you stand through those tumultuous periods? Governor Scott can speak the words. I'm not sure he's politically astute enough to take the actions that are necessary. I'll give you an example. Uh, not too long ago, month, month and a half ago, Governor Enterprise Florida, Space Florida, and the Economic Development Commission of Florida Space Coast jump on planes and go to Paris for the air show. They are the largest contingent of any state delegation at the Paris air show. And when they are still there or right after they came back, they announced 40 new aerospace jobs that are coming to Brevard County. They got one, right? The junket was worth it? They'd been working on it for what, a year and a half, two years? It wasn't that trip that made it happen. In the meanwhile, while they're gone, Rick Perry from Texas is floating his happy rear end all over the United States going to New York and Colorado and California and Connecticut and Massachusetts and saying, your legislators really put it to you, gun manufacturers. I am from gun-friendly Texas, and we want your jobs. We have fewer regulations. We've limited the lawyer's ability to get in your pocket and sue you for things that you do. Why don't you bring your jobs to Texas? Rick Perry is kicking Rick Scott's rear end when it comes to job creation in this country. Rick Scott, touting jobs, 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 let's get to work, decided to go on a junket to Paris and didn't do the job. Sorry, I'm, I'm not happy with it. Let's talk about local elections a little bit. Sure. Um, County Commission races, District 2, District 4, District 2 being the Central Brevard with mm -hmm. Merritt Island, Cocoa mm -hmm. Beach, Cocoa, District 4, Melbourne, Vieira, Satellite Beach area. Mm -hmm. Pretty crowded races, all Republicans. What are we anticipating here? While the race looks crowded now, it will thin out probably in both of those before the closing date, before uh, everybody is certified. And that's what, a week after the, or a few days after the filing deadline. Uh, I think in that District 4 race where you have potentially seven, eight names in it now, it'll thin down to four, maybe five that will believe they're viable. Of those, I really, I've already got a favorite in one of those races. The guy's a friend of mine, a respected businessman, and I think he would do the county very well. Um, I think it might be a battle between him and one or two of the others. There's a Melbourne councilman in the race. There's a couple other people there. There's already been one get out of that. Uh, in the District 2 race, I'm, I'm waiting to see. I've talked to one of those candidates. Uh, I read recently some of their opinions on what needs to happen, and I'm thinking one of the lesser knowns might have some of the better ideas for that seat that Chuck Nelson will be vacating. So just have to wait and see. It's going to be an interesting fray going into it. The problem is there's such a tight deadline between the filing deadline and the primary election. It makes it tough to interview them all and, and to get all that information out to our listeners, out to your readers. You've got a limited amount of time to do it. That's we, right. we may have to start a little early before we actually know who made it into the race and who didn't. But what's going to be the issue that gets people mad and gets people talking in, in the county commission races? In the past, it's been taxes, raising a tax rate. Well, the county commission just voted to propose a slightly lower tax rate, does that satisfy folks? Or are they going to be moving on to some other issue? Not going to satisfy them completely. One of the things that I think any county commission candidate needs to talk about is integrity with those five people on the board. You don't see it always. You see a board that has gone against its own rules in contract awards, those kind of things. It's bidding procedures. They could have a contract come in. They sent out a notice just a week ago to uh, garbage customers on well, the waste management contract. Right. After a competitive bidding process, and then here's your increase in your bill. What they didn't say was after the competitive bidding process, they chose the higher bid. And, and it's, they're being deceptive. If you are being honest in how you do your business while you're up on the dais, you don't have to be deceptive when you send the notices out. They, okay. they are not following their own rules. They're not awarding contracts as they should. They're not treating each other equi uh, ethically. And, and Andy Anderson is an embarrassment the way he treats Trudy Infantini. Robin Fisher is an embarrassment the way he treats Lori Scott or uh, Trudy Infantini or Lisa Cullen or any female that goes in front of that board. And, and it's Andy and Robin and Chuck Nelson to some extent. And, and it's we need some ethics and integrity up there, and I don't think we're getting it. So you think that... Uh 
the garbage hauling contract might be one of the things that they're talking about. That's part of it. Trail. Choosing to sue the schools over the school board decisions. That's another one. Absolutely. Do you think that a, um, you know, we've been through a fairly painful budget process for the schools. Mm -hmm. You're always going to go up or down a little bit in terms of how much money is coming in based on projections that come in. They're closing schools. The uh, school board did manage to uh, prevail in those efforts to do that over the county commission. Mm -hmm. Is that going to satisfy people if they're lean enough? And if the school board comes out and says, we really need a sales tax here to help you know, us keep things afloat, do you think people would be more inclined to vote that way? No. No. And Robin Fisher floated the idea last week at a county commission meeting that they may need a sales tax too. Put them both on the ballot, they both die. It, it's not going to happen. This, this county feels like it's taxed to death. We feel like there are expenditures that don't need to be made. We've got a uh, lady-in-waiting county manager in the person of Stockton Witten waiting for Howard Tipton to keel over so he can have the job for 15 months. He's going to sit there and actually be the county manager while Howard Tipton puts his feet up on the desk and says, I'm leaving. Uh, that's an expenditure that you don't need right now. So if you want a tax increase, you darn sure better cut the administrative cost, and I don't see the county doing that. They're doing it in, in recreation where they can make it hurt the people who like using the recreational facilities, but uh, you won't see them touch fire, you won't see them touch law enforcement, not suggesting that they should. But there are operational costs that they could cut. They're management heavy. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians, and they need to quit paying the chiefs what they're paying. Bill, thanks for sharing your point of view. Thanks, Matt. That's our program. Again, to publish a response to anything you saw today or read this week in our newspaper or website, send an email to letters at floridatoday.com. I'm Matt Reed, and we'll see you right here next week on WEFS. Look to the east.